Hey there guys, today we're going to be comparing the Ryzen 5 5800H in the B-Link Sur 5 Max versus the Ryzen 5 6600H in the Firebat M56 here. The reason we're doing this comparison is because I want to see how in 2024 these two chips have aged. And also currently in the market, these two systems are very similar in price to each other. Specifically systems that have the 6600H have remained really high in price for a very odd reason to me. See, when we look at the hardware that we're dealing with here, it's not that dissimilar. The B-Link Sur 5 Max has the Ryzen 7 5800H running at a TDP of 54 watts. And the system has 32 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz sodium memory. The Firebat on the other hand has a Ryzen 5 at 6600H, which is yeah, a newer generation than the 5800h the cpu architecture is actually identical it's a zen 3 plus so there's just slight refinements that really didn't amount to much of anything outside of efficiency gains so the only real major difference is just the igpu the 5800h has the radeon vega 8 which is one of the top of the line implementations of the vega igpu while it was a core reduction in comparison to the first generation of vega igpus that actually topped out on mobile at 11 cores and on desktop would go all the way up to 12. These later generation implementations actually ended up being faster even though they had fewer cores because the individual cores themselves were quicker and the memory speed improvements effectively ended up giving the biggest gains. And with a TDP of 54 watts, this is effectively one of the best implementations of a Vega iGPU we've ever seen, at least on a mobile platform. So now if we compare this to what the 6600H ended up being, there's a pretty major contrast here. What we have is essentially a previous generation CPU architecture and the iGPU is, is a cut down version of the top of the line chip. The top of the line chip capped out at 12 cores and at this generation, that 12 core version would be clocked anywhere between 2200 megahertz up to 2400 megahertz, depending on the specific chip that you get. In contrast the 660m in this apu it only has six cores and look okay i get it you might be thinking well yeah it's not the top of the line chip it's a ryzen 5 but you have to look back to what the previous generation looked like where when we came down to the 5600h we weren't looking at a four core igpu we were looking at a seven core igpu that means that the performance difference between the two igpu use was really not all that dramatic so it actually made the ryzen 5s a pretty decent value and with the launch of rdna they pretty much destroyed all that value that being said there are some key differences between the two systems one in particular is the fact that the firebat mini pc actually does have a usb 4 port in the front and of course because it is on a newer platform it is edr5 and it also does have gen 4 or SSD support, as opposed to the 5800H, which is DDR4, and it is just stuck at Gen 3 SSD speeds, and it has a SATA SSD port. This system also has two NVMe slots. So there are some quality of life improvements going with a system that is on a more recent platform, even if the core implementation that AMD went with isn't exactly the most ideal. But let's see what the actual gaming performance is in comparison between these two systems. So the first game we're taking look at is Black Myth Wukong running at 1080p with the lowest in-game graphics settings and it did set the FSR target upscale resolution at 67% on both systems. And with frame generation on for both, we can see that the 6600H does end up taking a lead here, seeing a 17% increase in the FPS average and a 20% increase in the 1% lows. This is a pretty substantial lead here, so it does show that the IPC increase of RDNA is doing something here though the fact that it again is a extremely cut down version of it does kind of eat into some of those gains but you can also see that the system is using less power overall than the sur 5 max while also providing better performance in this specific title so that's pretty impressive overall 
to the next game I took a look at was Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. And here this ends up being kind of a mixed bag in the sense that yes, the 6600H does end up winning here. And there are some pretty noticeable gains in both the FPS average and the 1% lows. But they don't translate to a playable experience at all. And we're using FSR at an upscale quality that I personally would never use. Ultra performance is just too low of a resolution to try to upscale to really be functional in most gaming scenarios. It's really just there if you're at 4K and you're really aggressively trying to get a playable experience. It's a Hail Mary desperation move and when you have a 1080p display, you're just better off not playing. So the next title I took a look at was Assassin's Creed Mirage running at the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR with the performance preset. And here, this was an interesting one. The 5800H ended up winning here and by a pretty noticeable margin, at least in the FPS average. An almost 30% difference in the FPS average is pretty substantial, especially considering the fact that Assassin's Creed Mirage came out around the time that AMD really dropped Vega as a optimized platform. So it's interesting to see that it's just doing this much better. And this was after multiple runs. I also tried out Returnal at the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR with the performance preset. And this is another one where the 5800H ended up winning, but very similar to Avatar. It didn't really matter. It's not a playable experience on either system, but it is a very clear win for the 5800H. It's interesting to see that there's a back and forth happening between the two systems here. And it kind of plays into my disappointment overall with the 6600H. I also took a look at Guardians of the Galaxy running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR at the ultra quality preset. And here this was another one where the 5800H had a very clear and decisive victory. It scored 19% higher in the FPS average and the 1% lows saw a 26% increase. This is pretty major and it's going to make a noticeable difference in terms of the actual playability of the game on these two systems. I decided to really try to push things with Far Cry 6, so I set it to the high graphics settings. Not ultra, but just high. And I did use FSR, but it's FSR at the ultra quality preset. And this was another one where the 6600H did actually end up winning, with a 16% increase in the FPS average over the 5800H. But the more substantial part is the 24% increase in the 1% lows, boosting those finally to be above 30, which is about the best minimum that I consider to be playable. And the fact that the 1% lows and the FPS average are so close to each other means that it's going to be a really nice gaming experience considering that the FPS average isn't exactly very high. And moving on to Mountain Blade Banner Lord, you're running with the low in-game graphics settings. This ends up being another win for the 6600H. It's interesting that as we move to older titles, it seems to just be more in favor of the 6600H. You would think it'd be kind of the opposite since presumably this stuff would be more optimized towards Vega than it would for RDNA. There is a pretty meaningful difference here, specifically in those 1% lows. The bump in the FPS average is not but really it's those 1% low gains that make the biggest difference here. And while any seasoned Mountain Blade player would consider either of these systems to be perfectly playable, I'm sure they would like that increase in those 1% lows. Tiny Tina's Wonderland here running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and FSR set to quality ends up continuing this back and forth game where the 5800H actually ends up taking the lead on this one. Though it's not a substantial one, at least not in the FPS average where we only see a 7% increase in performance between it and the 6600H, so there is still a nice 18% increase in the 1% lows. Both they're still going to be decently playable, but it is a nice improvement improvement overall. So again, it's very interesting to see that there's such a consistent back and forth between the two systems. There's no clear winner, at least so far. And going back almost a decade now, we have Batman Arkham Knight running with the medium in-game graphics settings. And we see that the 6600H actually ends up taking the lead here. Again, continuing this trend of some pretty noticeable back and forth differences between the two systems. I tested a very limited pool of games this time around just because I have to replace my main game SSD drive because it ended up just dying on me. 
So until the new one arrives tomorrow and I can actually download all the games on there again, that's going to end up taking a while. We could pretty much only play what I could fit in the relatively small SSDs that are in these systems, at least for the 6600H system. After seeing all those results, what do we think? Well, these two systems are surprisingly close to each other. And it's no wonder that on the market right now, they're priced very similar to each other. And it's very disappointing to see. I really wish that the 6600H would come down in price and really start to shake things up. I mean, in terms of hardware configuration, it's more of a replacement of the 5560U than it is a replacement of the 5600H. So it's pretty clear that if you care about gaming at all, you're better off going with the 6600H over the 5800H system. The only real difference between the two is just the fact that the 5800H is going to end up having better CPU performance, but it's not drastically better to the point where it would really sell me on it, especially because of the fact that the CPU is just so power hungry and it makes the system so loud. The biggest difference between the two systems is actually the fact that the Firebat was just noticeably quieter, where for most of the time I didn't really mind it just being there. It would really only ramp up when we were in a game or if we were really pushing it in general with a benchmark, but the Sur 5 Max would just sometimes ramp up in speed for no reason. It would just be sitting there and then it would just suddenly ramp up, so it was constantly reminding me that it was there. But I'm definitely going to test out these two systems in more games once my SSD arrives, so stay tuned for that. I'll catch you guys in the next one.